Hey there, this is Chad from Zombie Fight Shark, and this is episode zero of our Complex One series. Uh, and uh, this is going to be basics of synthesis. If you are not familiar with the basics of synthesis, you will probably want to watch this before getting into Complex One because you need to have a firm grasp on this before you jump into it with both feet if you are familiar or you figure out you think you can figure it out as you go cool then uh, you can skip to the next episode where we actually get into uh, complex itself but we're going to cover some of the important things you need to know about complex all the different pieces what they do uh, and and kind of how it works together and we're gonna do this in a way that um, makes the most sense um, it's gonna be very plain in terms of the explanation so um, let's get into it and start with the oscillator itself so uh, if you don't know um, what is what is an oscillator um, the oscillator is the thing that makes the noise we're looking at this here and I'm gonna show cables for pretty much this entire thing because uh, routing is so important in this you need to understand the routing um, so here with everything disconnected um, let's just see what the actual oscillator is and it's the thing that makes the noise you can see I ran there's the out and to the mixer in and that's that's all it does it just makes the noise and um, as you probably guessed you can play the oscillator using the pitch uh, but it's a constant tone you know you're not gonna um, without routing some other things it's gonna be a constant tone it can be whatever pitch you want it to be um, but it's gonna be constant so oscillator the thing that makes the noise right and we've got multiple oscillators within complex one Second, what is an envelope? Uh, and what is an ADSR envelope like we have here? Uh, there's, or, or what is just an envelope in general? And an envelope is the thing that shapes some aspect of the sound. And an envelope can be applied to anything in your routing chain. And let's apply this ADSR to volume, right? Uh, so we already know you just get a constant tone right there, right? Now, you see this is the envelope out. It doesn't say out, it just says envelope, but that's what it is, envelope out. And we run this to volume. Then now our volume is controlled by this envelope. Attack, ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release. So right now I'm hitting keys on my keyboard and nothing's happening and that is because the keyboard is not actually hooked up yet you have to see this trigger in right here you have to have that trigger in set up so how do we do that trigger in goes to the gate and what is the gate <laughs> so the gate is exactly what it sounds like thinking think of it as a open and closes a window where the sound can get through if you if you like metaphors um, so now the gate which is when you press down a key on your keyboard then that's opening the window so to speak when you let go of that key on your keyboard you're closing the window and now that opening triggers this gate then this envelope controls the volume of our oscillator. So, uh, and, and I'm sure you've probably played with an ADSR envelope before, but um, just to make sure we're clear on it. So, very long attack, but I have no decay, I have no sustain, I have no release, so it actually cuts off when it reaches the peak of the attack just like that so now I'm gonna add a decay portion to it so fairly long decay I've been just holding the key down the whole time there 
and then it eventually dies off naturally. Now, if I add sustain, it will stay on as long as I hold the key down. And you, you heard that little click there. That little click was because I have no decay to it. So it went to the peak of the slow attack and then it immediately jumped to the level of the sustain. So now if I add just a really short decay and as you can see when you go up here we'll, we'll make it not so long in the attack. Uh, 1.9 seconds, uh, 121 milliseconds, uh, sustain is a volume because that's going to determine what volume it's, it stays at. And you heard the really fast decay there. If we drop this sustain real low, then it's gonna drop low when after it hits that decay stage. And then if we want it to be full volume, then it just stays at full volume when it gets to the top of the decay stage. Then finally release, if you want your note to have any kind of a tail to it, then and you heard that fast attack, fast decay, and then it w w went up to sustain. And then when I let the note go, you don't get that hard click anymore. It dies off slowly. And then short release. And so if you've never played with the ADSR envelope, then this is an important thing to play with and, and play around with because it is kind of the, it is the beginning of, you know, controlling the sound and many, many aspects of your sound uh, can be controlled through an envelope. Just a quick mention, um, the velocity uh, is, is important. Um, in terms of controlling the uh, your keyboard because um, co complex one is like a traditional oscillator in that you're only going to you get the same volume for everything unless you have used this you route this velocity um, velocity cable velocity setting uh, to the appropriate place now to take advantage of velocity you have to route it into and this will be covered again later in more depth but you have to route it to your scale and amp and then your envelope to your scale and amp then route that to your output mixer so it's a little bit more complicated um, just be aware of uh, what velocity means and what it is because uh, that will that will come in quite a bit later on let's talk about a LFO an LFO. Uh, so what is an LFO? It's a low frequency oscillator and it's a way to affect your multiple elements of your uh, of your of your sound. So uh, in in this guy let's so here's our LFO and let's say we want to route it to pitch and you see the rate it's in hertz there and you'll see the you know the rates are in hertz or they'll be in um they'll be in time um depending on devices and how things are set up uh so this one just happens to be set up for hertz uh and the <laughs> when it says low frequency so it goes all the way down to 0.13 hertz and it goes all the way up to 66 hertz, which is a tone. It's at that point you're, um, you know, it's audible hearing range, um, but uh, it's uh, it gives you a lot of a lot of options. So we're gonna put it right there, and all we've done here is routed to the mixer, and we're just use applying the LFO to pitch, and then we're just giving it a little bit of an amount. And if you look down here, you can see shrinking and growing. Square wave up and down, up and down, up and down. And you can also just route it over 
to you, know, you can route it to anywhere for that matter so there's our square wave and here's our sine wave so you can actually see in that you know however fast that it oscillator is it's going to apply to all these different effects all this different routing so there's tons and tons of options that's going to get covered in length uh, and it's got its own episode um, so LFO is another way to manipulate the sound and it can also be a way to actually make a sound see when you get high enough then it it is an oscillator low frequency oscillator um, it just doesn't have the pitch range that these others do it's intended as an effect uh, rather than um, uh, rather than a method to uh, create tones but it can be used in that way uh, filter uh, is I think everyone probably has a good idea but um, filter is one more way to affect the sound and uh, in this one there's a low pass and a high pass filter the filter can be controlled through envelopes it can be controlled through LFO it can be controlled through your keyboard through the velocity of how hard you hit the keys um, there's multiple ways to affect it uh, and it, but it the short the short answer the short version is it affects the sound uh, by applying you know it may change the frequency uh, applying extra harmonics to a note um, through the use of resonance or uh, it it can do several different things um, like this one has drive built into it which can, you can get some nice overdrive with it. Um, but it's another way to process the sound and then that processing function can be affected many ways and so now we'll switch gears from the regular oscillator and just look at this noise over here and you know they've got all of these different versions of noise red blue resonant etc and uh, noise is another way to color your sound uh, and to get unique effects and get interesting things to happen and it is a uh, it is a, ver a very useful tool um, is once you start to learn how how to use it and manipulate it as part of your uh, tool chest then it's very helpful um, and if you want to make drums uh, if you enjoy designing your own drums then um, the, being very familiar with uh, noise is critical for cymbals So that you know that kind of sounds like a just ocean wave, but that's that's your your white noise. Yeah, and that's kind of got an explosion sound. You know, so and again, this will get covered more later. But noise is another oscillator and another way to affect your sound. And last but not least, if you have looked at complex and look through the patches you'll probably notice sometimes you see this uh, and and you click on it and you have all these options for routing and then sometimes you see this version where it shows the cables and the depending on how your brain works you're you can go either way with these if you are able to look at the list and quickly route the things wherever you want them to go then more power to you um, what I found is the more I use complex I, I at least when I was building a patch I'd always use the cables because uh, it's so easy to get lost and then you can you have to go back and look at it and figure it out again uh, once you get lost so I'm I'll be using the cables for for this whole series uh, and the only time that I'm 
turned them off is you know if the patch is done i'm not going to mess with anything but even then uh, sometimes it's still useful and um, so if you're looking at this and you're like i have no, you know no idea then um, then you can boom show cables so and that is episode zero uh, the basics of synthesis uh, if I miss something then let me know and I will uh, create a supplement of episode zero and um, uh, we'll, we'll get more into depth into it if we need to um, episode one we're going to talk about the performance bar across the top of complex one so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time cheers